Hello and welcome to the Donahue Group. We're so delighted that you could join us for a half an hour of fast-paced and highly intelligent conversation on the issues of the day, focusing uh, this uh, show on some city and county issues, which I think will keep us more than uh, interested and entertained. Joining me today, former State Senator Cal Potter, Professor Tom Paneski, math professor at the UW Sheboygan, looking very natty in that color, which is perfect for you, matches you. your eyes. <laughs> the sartorial <laughs> splendor does not end here today. Look at the suspenders wow. on Dr. Risto. I just love it. Braces. Braces. Ken That's and let's get, yes, and we'll brace ourselves. <coughs> Ken Risto, social studies king for the Sheboygan Area School District. King. I'm Mary Lynn Donahue. I practice law here in town. and. We with a new firm. With a new, <laughs> with a new firm. Yes, but that's and a new attitude. There you go. There you go. And, and it's a new a, workload. <laughs> a new workload. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole, really irritating. Uh, Forty hours a week. <laughs> oh, th that was unkind. That was terribly unkind, coming from someone who's sucking in the public trough. But in any event, Ooh, uh, public uh, service. Public service. And let's go into public Please service join us. and Please join us. <laughs> and talk about. <clears throat> it's a tough group tonight. Um, we have a lot of interesting things to talk about citywide with some county implications. I'm going to start, why not, with the um, Orange Cross Ambulance routine, which by now has been settled with lightning speed. As I remember, the last time the Orange Cross uh, contract came up, it was studied basically to death, is my memory. I, I don't know if that's completely correct. Uh, but this uh, fairly major, I think we can say, decision um, in terms of imp impact on the taxpayers came about very quickly. Um, Tom, former well, I'm pretty alder passionate about that. I was an alderman at the time when we moved it from the police department to and the to the pr private sector, and, and we spent a lot of time discussing that and a lot of effort. And uh, in those days, it was the police. It was in the police. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you could actually get pulled over for speeding by an ambulance, <laughs> <laughs> which I... Uh... Well, they didn't have paramedic service then. They were just basically, they were EMTs. Okay. And so, the, you know, to move up to every community was to build to a paramedic service, and obviously the police didn't want to be in, the, in, in that field. They wanted to be policemen. Was there any talk then about the fire department taking it over? Uh, they, they put in a bid, uh, and we went out for bids. And the fire department oh. put in a bid, and a couple other, and Orange Cross put in a bid, and Curtis Ambulance, and two or three others. And we we went through the bids and selected uh, Curtis. And then, of course, Orange Cross was upset at the time, and there was a big hullabaloo about uh, uh, Orange Cross is homegrown or whatever it is to keep the company. Uh, we thought Curtis put in the better bid, and uh, and however it, it didn't materialize, and we had Orange Cross. And we have Orange Cross for 15 years. And so what year was that? That's 15 years ago. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because they're talking about the contract coming up now. They were three, five-year contracts, so that's probably 15 years ago. So 1991 or thereabouts? Yeah. Okay. Thereabouts, yeah. All right. All and right. the contract being sought now was a 10-year, was it not? A 10-year, yeah. Okay. And they could have negotiated. Maybe they could have gotten, or the city could have encouraged Orange Cross to pay a little more for, you know, uh, the right to have the police calls or the ambulance calls or whatever. But to do what the council did, they're going backwards, in my so estimation. Is, so, is there a contract with the, the fire department now? They'll probably have to draw one up. I mean, they agreed to turn go, it over, right. go that way. So they're probably. I uh, suspect. Be, why should contract. they have? Yeah. No. Well, they don't need a contract. Now. No, I mean within the. But you'd department. almost think there'd be certain benchmarks, you know, like making money. <laughs> well, and there was a proposal that the fire department did submit that is actually on the city's web page, and you can take a, you know, take a look at it. And uh, so they obviously thought through many of the issues, and um, but proposals are proposals, and. Um, you know, I hadn't thought about it, but maybe the better course of action might have been to take bids. Um, to put it out for to put it out for bid and see who could well, come back. But obviously the city didn't want it. They they. I'll, I'll go out on a limb, but the, the, we got a young council who's interested in power, in greed, and they're taking over the city, uh, and they're forgetting that they serve the city. They just put out their I don't know thirty or forty 
uh, workers from Orange Cross. I mean, these are paramedics, probably people who moved here, uh, got jobs here. Some of them probably are homegrown. All of a sudden now, they are going to have a job. They're going to be moving out. So instead of creating jobs, I think the city council, with their, quote, power and greed view, are now eliminating jobs in the city. I, I, it's backwards to me, but it's done. <laughs> So well, when you say, when you say now greed, tell us you how you really feel. Yeah. <laughs> when you say greed, Tom, are you, are you referring to the fact that uh, Chief Lustusky has sort of dangled out the proposition that there's profits to be made here? Well, yeah. yeah. And, uh, okay. Reading the paper, aldermen are saying, we can make money. We can make money. Well, you're supposed to serve the community mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a role. So it was the thing. And then the chief says, uh, if I lose money, then I'll take it out of the budget. Give me a break. The chief knows that an alderman are not going to take money out of his budget. Kind of like the police department, and we'll get, we'll get to that in just a minute. But <laughs> he knows, uh, so he could say that knowing when the time comes that they don't make money, the, the alderman will, won't take money out of his budget. It's just, it's, it's politics. It's the way they play the game down there. Let me just ask philosophically, should government <coughs> be in the business of making money? And that's a legitimate that's question. A, yeah, it's a philosophical thing. I think, no, we, we're there to serve the community as best way we can. If we uh, can provide a service to the community that can't be done in the private sector, uh, then we should do it. But the ambulance service was something that could be done in the private sector and was working well with the, the arrangement with the county. And to take it over is just a power grab. Hmm. That's my kind of view of government. I don't know if you might have a different view. That's the yin. Do we have a yang here? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I, I think you know whether government makes money or not probably depends on the use to which it's put. If it stays within the safety, public safety realm, where they're going to help finance the fire department or police department, probably yeah, it's a good idea. The property tax is not a, a, a good idea to to you know it's a rather aggressive tax. It, it does force a lot of elderly people and others to think about how big of a house they have and and whether they need to sell this monstrosity to be able to stay in the, in the living quarters. You know, those are the type of decisions that are forced on them by the economics of the property tax. And I think there are legitimate ways that government ought to look at uh, financing government and at times other than the property tax. Mm -hmm. um, Wisconsin relies very heavily on the property tax. A lot of other communities uh, in this country rely very heavily on user fees. It's not unusual to see uh, communities with units mm -hmm. for everything there is, from parks to uh, to higher water and sewer and, and uh, fire charges and whatever, to try to minimize uh, other sources of taxes, namely the property tax. Mm -hmm. Or the income tax. Yes. As, I mean, this, the state of Wisconsin actually has a, the percentage of revenue from the state perspective from uh, user fees is pretty high. Uh, it's in the 20% range. I, I was just looking at their pie, mm -hmm. pie chart of where, where money comes from. Surprisingly, just a tiny percentage from corporate um, taxes. So yeah. that, was just a, that was just an interesting... Yeah. Uh, Which interesting has been piece. an evolution over the last 30 years to try to do that. Right. Now we're seeing the results of, of that shift and now local governments are looking for alternatives <laughs> to the property tax, which is the goose that's now left. <laughs> What's the yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so the question is, is there a golden egg in this? It, and I have not looked, and there wasn't a counter bid to really look at, and not much time was spent on this. But if Orange Cross is only making seventy-one thousand a year in profit, which is not bad, I, I mean, but that's kind of razor thin. And mm -hmm. for the fire department to indicate that it is looking, and I'm sure not right out of the right out of the box, but you know, fairly soon at making, I thought four hundred twenty-five thousand a year was was put out as a as a possible profit, if you will. Um, well, it's it staffing. Seems, you know, Orange Cross unrealistic. probably has full-time staff, mm -hmm. and the fire. And I'm sure I don't know. I didn't participate in the discussion with the figures. I guess that the chief presented. So I may be doing him a disservice. But I would think he would consider his paramedic staff 50% uh, mm -hmm. or whatever as a paramedic and 50% as a fireman. Mm -hmm. you know, putting out fires, inspections, yeah. uh, other kinds of things. So already that's a way to paper reduce staff by half. So obviously they could say they're going to make more than Orange Cross because Orange Cross has to count its staff full time. 
Okay, I see what you're saying. I mean, plus Orange Cross may also have a holistic uh, budget here, and that includes probably people at the emergency room level who this, obviously the fire department would not in any way have to finance. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So they're just going to be carriers to the to hospital. The, to the hospital, yeah. 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 All right, well, has there been, has there been discuss, I'm getting back to Cal's comment. Has there been some discussion already, because uh, I'm on kind of coming late to the, to the table about knowing this, has there been discussion about um, where the money, if these monies materialize, these profits materialize, where that money is going to go? Is it going to stay within the realm of public safety, as Cal was talking about? Or I think is it so. I th I w they were talking about okay. putting it into vehicle maintenance, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. And, um, and the fire department is, obviously the trucks and so forth, are, it's a huge capital outlay. Mm -hmm. um, I well, just I mean, if, they, if they're making money to, like, you know, alternate sources of uh, revenue for taxes and stuff, they ought to reduce the taxes with the money. Uh -huh. But they well, won't. I think that's, uh, that's what that's I was thinking, is that that's it's going to be point. interesting <laughs> as, as a pool of money starts coming in, obviously that money is being, it's a user fee. You're charging people mm -hmm. who use the ambulance service a certain amount of money. I assume they're using the same fees as Orange Cross is currently charging folks when they pick folks people up who need medical attention. Oh, they could change so them, pretty soon you start saying, well, you know, the pressure would be, and I would imagine you're going to get some pressure to say, right. well, if you're making a profit, government should be making a profit. Let's simply cut the, the cut user the fee here, just like we got rid of the wheel tax not so long ago, which was, designed, which was designed to maintain roads and streets in the city as well. Yeah. One of the, I think, big that. issues that needs to be addressed <coughs> and, and probably should have been early on is the whole issue of what do we do to service to town of Sheboygan, town of Wilson, communities that are now served by Orange Cross, and whether we should not start looking in this area at more at metro government. I know that's always been a, a, some of the pariah nobody wants to even touch because towns want to have their little realm and sort of villages and cities and so on. But uh, you go to Jacksonville, Florida, or you go to Nashville, and those areas, they do have countywide services. Their fire departments, their police departments are countywide. I know that's uh, Ooh, uh, something look, you don't want to talk about. Words, yes. But uh, maybe there are some services where we need to start looking at providing them across borders rather than now as we are arguing, what are we going to do about these entities that are now oh, left? Yeah. You know. Well, it might be a golden little egg in that where the fire yeah. department would now stretch out and. Well, and know. you need some you need some really people who are really you know, broad-based thinkers who are and who get elected to office and who can bring along their constituencies uh, uh, with them. Um, I think um, the the shared services committee had been revitalized. Um, well, about two years ago, when Mayor Prez was elected, um, there was more discussion between the city and the county than there had been. Interestingly enough, the Shared Services Committee met last week and constituted a study committee to look at ambulance and emergency services provisions within the county. Um, that did not slow the city council down uh, at all, unfortunately, and so I don't know where that discussion is going to go. I wonder if some of those relationships have been impaired at this point uh, so that it'll be the philosophy will be a you know pox on both your houses. We're not talking about anything. I don't know, um, but I think if you really do zero-based planning, if you say we have this county that needs these services, what is the best, most efficient way of providing them at the lowest cost to the taxpayer? Remembering now, city taxpayers pay for county services as well as as city. I mean, I mean, it's a, I mean city taxpayers are paying. They're not paying twice, but they certainly are paying more than their county counterparts. Um, I, I, I just, I don't see a political will to do that, and, and now I see a lot of uh, hurt feelings, and it appears that the council has taken a position that is, at least what you hear, is diametrically opposed to what the majority of Sheboyganites who care about this issue feel. Calls are 10 to 1 against, yeah. uh, against getting, rid of, uh, uh, getting rid of Orange Cross. Um, this is not a popular decision. It's an 11 to 5 vote. I found the, the you know, politics making strange bedfellows. Ryan, Clayunas, Verhassel, Wangaman, and... Um, you said Bill. Yeah, another fifth person. Um, it's just... Boren. Uh, yeah, I said four. Uh, no, Boren voted. No, he voted. Didn't he vote? Uh, I thought he voted again. 
He voted against it. Okay, and that would be, and that would have certainly been consistent with his philosophy, but um, it was an odd group of interest melding there, you know, people that you normally don't see, and uh, so I, I, I just don't know where this leaves us exactly. Well, you we had a new influx of uh, kind of business types, and my alderman, oh, the numbers don't lie. Because other issues besides numbers, you know, that you need to consider about. And the I'm numbers don't lie. Tom, well, the numbers do lie. Guess, <laughs> they well, lie all the well, time. I know, I know. <laughs> I spent half of my time where I work just trying to get them to be honest about the numbers. Yeah, I know. But that being said, uh, but that's kind of interesting, though. You know, the perception is the council, especially in the last election, elected people with more of a private sector, sector orientation. orientation. Yeah. You would think they would be the last group that would want to turn something over to the public sector. sector. So I find this kind of an interesting turn of events. Yeah, it is. It, and it, I don't know how much of it really is, just we know we've got a zero. I mean, I've talked to very informally and very confidentially some of the members, the aldermen and alder women on the council, and they all tell me that they're just really frightened about zero based budgets for the next couple of years and what that all means that they've really in many ways kicked some of the cans down the road and now they're looking at the future and they're saying I wonder how much of their vote is, is just really determined we really do need to generate revenue because the otherwise the scenario is <coughs> not what we really want to face because we're going to face really unpopular decisions down the road. And well, this that's should what they're elected to do. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's what they're well, elected exactly. to do. Yeah. And it should end um, uh, and I think I've mentioned this before, but my treasured mom living with us falling called 911. The first folks on the scene are three big firefighters. You know, the guys are all big and they're in good shape and they come rushing in. And then about three or four minutes later, I mean, in a very timely fashion, Orange Cross is there. So you got five big guys, you know, trying to maneuver around. And, and, and it seemed to me just to be a duplication of services. This may keep the fire department more efficient, more occupied. Only 20% of their calls now are fire related. Yeah. The other 80% are responding to the same calls that Orange Cross comes to. And again, if you had just fearless planners uh, with a vision who might look at the most efficient way of providing services, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see what, what, what the services would look like. Yeah, I didn't send a letter in. To the letters to the editor, but I really thought about it. Well, you're doing this today, so. I know, and, but you had all <laughs> a of verbal it. letter. Right? Uh, uh, this uh, is a Dulcy Johnson. It's not a Valentine. Uh, <laughs> Dulcy Johnson uh, uh, submitted a letter, and she gave her view. Uh, then Alderman Tetchlog, usually pretty reserved, uh, yes, yeah. wrote a letter. He's uh, he was a uh, like a dean of the council for a while. Yes, and then we had Mark Leiter from the county pl county planner. Three people involved over time felt. This is a no-brainer. It stays with the uh, with the private sector. Duh. So there's a new mindset out there. Yeah. Although I think <laughs> I do think Ken's points are well taken about just you know the look. I mean, we've got a municipal court, for example, instituted in large part to save money and to oh, make yeah, money. I forgot about that. And yeah. um, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty brand new. Yeah. It's not even a year old yet. And, and financially, I don't know how it's doing. It would take a while for it to become financially viable because you got to get people to pay their fines or their forfeitures so and you know there's a little bit of lag time well let's segue nicely then into the other big issue um, uh, that has been uh, in the paper which is uh, Chief Kirk's decision to pull funding for the street crimes unit and the community policing unit that's caused quite a bit of controversy apparently his overtime budget is severely strained eight officers short um, the paper today indicates that, that the council, the finance committee has now told the council, find the $175,000. What are your thoughts? This would be to keep those two units mm -hmm. functioning. Well, when budgets are tight, sometimes you cut the things that are uh, the most visible, oftentimes most important, and it does force uh, people to then say, uh, keep them, and, but cut elsewhere. And I think maybe that decision is being made here, and there's a prioritization of services being done uh, as a result of this. Well, there's, a, there's usually another issue when they do budgeting. They try to treat all the departments the same. And, and when I was on the council, we did the same thing. It's very difficult to discuss priorities, uh, and some departments may have higher priorities than others, but they try to treat everybody the same. Take a 1% cut mm -hmm. from every department. Well, 
well, if something in the police department is really important, maybe the cut should have come from public works. And you know, you, it's maybe the parks, they always cut parks is uh, easy because it doesn't affect people. And you could cut back a little bit on parks, but not too much because you don't want to lose the, the image that Sheboygan has. So. Well, but the they, they don't do that. Yeah. Right, especially like the dandelion crop we have yeah. <laughs> around the city. I mean, I've just noticed that maybe because the last couple of days is driving around and clearly we're not spending any money, money on, on, on keeping yeah. dandelions down, that's for sure. That's oh, not such awful. a bad idea. Right. You know, we've got enough they pesticides running salad, into the... Right. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Maybe country could, boy. <laughs> and maybe we could take our, our firefighters who are not doing anything and waiting around and having them harvest dandelions <laughs> and making wine and selling it. <laughs> now there's, <laughs> there's another money maker. maker. There's, there's another money maker. <laughs> well, we just have, we got a bunch of good ideas. Yeah. I am buying my uh, computer uh, ink cartridges now from monks, laser monks. <laughs> it's, it's a nice little monastery, and they're doing, you know, well. They're making it, money, right? <laughs> yeah. And they are but. making money. But, Tom, back to your point. Um, the plain fact is is that the, um, the budget for um, the police department in the last 10 years has had a very, very steady growth. Fire department behind it. Public works has been going yeah, down, down yeah. and libraries, cemeteries, those things have been staying about the same. So really the police department has had about a 30% increase in its budget over other departments. Um, and and, and here's, here's the question, what is the priority? It seems to yep. me that people are feeling very strongly that street crimes and community policing are priority, and I think that's certainly a defensible position. Police officers issue in the city alone, and Mr. Risto here having been, you know, victimized in that regard, over 9,000 traffic tickets I was guilty. a year. <laughs> no complaints. I went peacefully. Nobody I thought had, you just got a warning. Nobody had a taser me. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, there you go. Yes, yeah, so I was the, the, officer, the, officer was, the officer was kind enough to give me a warning, and I, I was, was greatly appreciated. All right. I don't think it had anything to do with being a TV star. Oh, I didn't know you were a TV star. Where, where, <laughs> where is that? <laughs> oh, in a different <laughs> show. Very good. Excellent. The Board of Education here. Yeah, yeah, well, there you are. Um, 9,000 traffic tickets. That's a lot. I think traffic enforcement's pretty in important. You know, you have reckless people like, you know, the, the guy wearing suspenders here, you know, going down the street, 45, 50 miles an hour. It's a little dangerous. Uh, what do you think yeah, about I, the idea of it? Somewhere along the way, the truth just got. Well, I, you know, the chief Butcher. apparently is deciding to go back to that issue. I think he's apparently deciding that that's less important to him than other issues in the fire department, where traffic mm -hmm. and crime. Uh, Although the way the the newspaper article okay. was written, it's not, you know, chief rearrange and reprioritize how you're delivering services and what is most important to the community. And I wonder, would there be any utility in asking the community what it feels is most important? But that's neither here nor there. But they're actually going to get $175,000. They've been the council has been directed by the finance committee to find that money, essentially for overtime, so you can keep those two units going. I think Cal, you you pointed out, and that's not a bad tactic, um, is to take the most popular, visible kinds of programs and and um, and. Uh, Cut them, generate Cut them. public interest, interest and response. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. because the 175000 is going to come from somewhere with the wheel tax being gone, with absolutely flat revenues from the state. Well, not absolutely flat, but pretty flat Relative. revenues from the state. Um, yeah. I, I think it's real interesting. It's a situation in my mind that cries out for zero base planning. Let's put a big white piece of paper on the floor and think about if we had the chance to create from scratch, what would it look like? And get a lot of people in talking about that. I realize that's very pie in the sky and certainly not likely to happen in a, in a political circumstance, but if I were running the, <laughs> the world, world. Would, I, the mayor, <laughs> no, that's okay, Tom, I promise no, I won't do that. When the mayor that. first took office, he had the hearing sessions where essentially uh, community members were invited to do exactly that, right? And they did. Talk about priorities and what it is they want. Mm -hmm. So has that information now become irrelevant? Um, I don't think it was done um, with a planning perspective necessarily, mm -hmm. although I think it, it's, it's a good database for that. Okay. Uh, number two, I don't think it got that particular. Should we balance, um, I don't know what street crimes are exactly. I mean, 
I don't know what they do that's any different than regular policing, but that's my ignorance. Um, but do we want to take traffic enforcement? Should we have less management? Should we have fewer lieutenants, sergeants, captains, and deputies, deputy chiefs? Should we have those folks participating um, on the street? Would that be a good idea? I mean, those are all things that I think you mm -hmm. could talk about. Um, but I, it, it's just been a very interesting political process. And uh, I think right now it's pretty tough to be an alderman. I well, wouldn't want to. It's not going to get easier. As you pointed out, there are a lot of things that they've forwarded. Uh, that Fast they have to forwarded. Pay, and they have to pay for them in the future. Yeah, yeah, and people used to say being on the school board was the worst job that you could have. Oh, no. I would, I'd beg yeah. to differ. I would say being a city alder person yeah. right now is about yeah. as tough you as know, it one gets. One good things about school board members, you used to at least have a, a guarantee by the state to try to reach two-thirds funding. Correct. There's no guarantee right. for municipalities. It used to be a benchmark when we were down at about 40% state funding of schools to provide about city of Sheboygan anywhere from 35 to 40% of their budget sh through shared revenue. Well, that is gone to byway by the wayside because of the commitment to go to two-thirds state funding of schools. Yeah. Hey, only a couple of minutes left, and I'm sure that this will continue to play out and we'll have interesting discussions about it all summer. Um, any golfers in the group? Golf? Sort of. Sort of? Once or twice. So I'm not a golfer. No. I'm not a golfer either. But the Senior Open is starting. Um, interesting article in the paper about not reduced expectations, but modified expect expectations on the part of uh, business people who, when the PGA was here, I mean, I think we all thought that there'd be just literally waves of people coming through the downtown. Again, it was waves of money coming through. <laughs> <laughs> the greed aspect yeah. again. We're going to capitalize. But it looks like the city tourism department is doing some interesting things to try to get people downtown. The, I guess it was traffic patterns, too, that yeah. kind of steered so people. It was so That's well run. That was, well that was quickly it was and out well quickly. Yeah. Uh, you got on the freeway, and there was no incentive to look back and go back into Sheboygan. Uh, exactly. I know there are a couple of friends of mine who, run, who ran businesses when anticipated they would be near oh, the yeah. normal sorts of routes that people would go to get out to uh, Whistling Straits and so they anticipated huge amounts of, of you know business Drive -by -drive and when they saw the actual route and, and the way they got people in and out there was no way you, yeah. they, they were even going to spend any money they were back in Milwaukee before they knew it yeah <laughs> so so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out and how uh, how uh, we uh, enjoy having a, a good time it's in the city. It's nice that they're coming. In the city That's oh, and the nice. county. Yeah. It's huge. I mean, it's, it's huge. It's very big. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think really makes people, there's so many volunteers from within the city and the county who get involved in the. Mm -hmm. in the, uh, the national exposure. Huh? Sheboygan County? My that brother and the uh, principal of South High School are in charge of one of the holes. Well, oh, all right. Okay. Now, is that going to be troublesome, or, yeah. <laughs> or is everything good? No, I, is everything? I know anything about Phil. He's going to run a tight ship on that hole. And then with that happy note, we'll close out. Thanks for joining us.